Apart from constructors, the major parts of a class are properties, methods, and fields. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use them to make well-designed classes. C Sharp has a very nice syntax for creating properties. So if you have a book class and you want to put a title, description, and number of pages property on it, you can do it very quickly like this. Public class book, and then with the P-R-O-P tab tab, string tab tab title, P-R-O-P tab string description, and uh, integer pages, and that's it. And already you can create the book, 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 equals new book, and then change the properties on it. So title equals C-sharp cookbook, and description you can add, a good book, and number of pages as well. And you can display these from outside the object. So if we say a book title, then if I run it, we have the title of the book. These kinds of classes are what I call property bags, because basically all they are placed to keep information about an object. But when you create classes and construct classes, you usually want a lot more control over what information gets exposed. For instance, here we might not want description and pages to be exposed on the object. For instance, only title or maybe none of the information. Or we might want methods to display the information about the book in a specific way. So let me show you how to get some more control over what your classes expose and what they don't. So let's comment out these here. Control K C for a comment. And instead of these public properties, I'm going to make private fields. Private string title underscore and lowercase. Private string description and private integer pages. Now the class book has this information in it, but as you can see here, we can't access these variables anymore because they're private inside the class. So how do we get to define these private fields? Well, usually it's through a constructor. So let's make a constructor, C-T-O-R, tab, tab, and we'll pass in all of the parameters that we need for the book. So this would be a string title, and notice there's no underscore here, string description, and integer pages, and then we have to assign everything from what was passed in. So title, description equals description, and pages equals pages. And there we have it. So now we can basically do the same thing here. We just have to, if we look at the constructor IntelliSense here, we have to pass in the title, which is C Sharp Cookbook, C Sharp Cookbook, and a good book. And what else do we have? 343. So now we can get rid of these. So now let's say all we want to do is actually display the title. So we want to make a property. But all we want to do is display it. We don't want to be able to set the value of the title from outside the object. So we can make a property, but only say that we want to be able to get the value. So we'll do it in the same way here. String title. And now we'll take some of this off. We don't need the set anymore. The set sets the value. We just need to say get, return, and or the value of the private field, like that. And you can do it nicely all on one line, which is nice. So here we have a class. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. And it does. And you notice that we only have access to the title, but not the description, for instance. So here we have a class that is a bit locked down. It's a book class. It has these three internal private fields, which are defined through the constructor when the object is constructed. And only the title can be read. Let me show you here that the title can't even be set. So if you say title equals VB dot net cookbook, okay, we change the title, good. But we get the error that a title cannot be assigned to, it is read only, because we took the set or the setter out of it. 
Let me show you another advantage of private fields. Let's say you have a property that is a generic list of strings, for instance. This is a book, so you might have a generic list of strings, which are uh, authors. Okay, so you define it here. And then inside your constructor or anywhere in your class, you want to use this variable. So you say authors, add, and then you add some name. And everything looks fine. And you run it. But you get an error. Why do you get this error? Because this property hasn't been instantiated yet. It's still null. So you would have to do the extra work inside your constructor and say authors equals new list string. And then you would be able to run it. But the problem is, what if you have 20 of these, for instance? Then you have to instantiate them 20 times in this constructor. And then what if you have multiple constructors? Then you have to make sure that in each constructor, these values are instantiated. It would be nice if they were automatically instantiated. And that's the advantage you get when you make them private fields. So let me show how to turn this into a private field. It's the same as the others list string authors and then here you can say new list string and so here you don't need to redefine that and here you just say authors and that will work then if you want to expose your authors private field through a public property then you could say list of string authors and just send it out return authors like that with the semicolon and then you get the best of both worlds so let's continue with our well-constructed class here we have examples of properties we have examples of private fields and this is a constructor. And now we're going to make a method, for instance, to generate the HTML for this book. So to make a method, you simply say public, for instance, so that it's accessible from outside the object, and then say what it's going to return. We're going to return a string with HTML in it. And then we'll call it get HTML. And let's use a string builder because we'll be adding strings. So you always want to use a string builder for that. And at the end, we're going to return the string version of the string builder. And then we can say append. I'm going to use append format because it's very nice. For instance, this is where the title is going to go. And close the tag. And we use the private field title. And the same thing with description. And we have then description like this. And that'll return it. Why don't we put in the new lines here? So when it's displayed, it looks better. So now we have a book defined here, and we print the title, and now we can say book and get HTML. Like that. And let's see how it looks. And it does indeed print the HTML for us. So that's the a purpose of a method to perform some kind of logic or to combine internal data and return it outside the object in some new way. And that brings us to the topic of, well, what is the difference actually between a property and a method? Because they're both returning information. I mean, this is a title, and this is a somewhat more complex output. Couldn't we have a property that also returns some complex output like this or has some logic in it? Yes, you can, but it's not the best of design. But let me show you how to do it, and I'll tell you why it's not the best idea. I'm going to do Control K D. So here we have our property. It's simply returning the internal value of title. But theoretically, we could put some logic on it, like we could say, if title contains C sharp, then return title plus on sale. 
else, just return the title. Okay, now what's this going to do? What do you think is going to be displayed here when we say book title? It says on sale. But what if the name of the book is jQuery cookbook? Then on sale is not printed. So you can do that. Should you do that? It's probably not a good idea because you don't want to give the impression that, for instance, title equals something that it doesn't equal internally. Because usually when people use your class, they assume that a property is just giving the internal value of the object. And you're just using the property to control access to the private field. If you really needed to do something like this, just go ahead and put it in an explicit method like this public string get extended title or something like that or get smart title or something like that and basically there you have it and leave properties to simply return the value of the private field so in this lesson, we covered the basic units of a class, the constructor, properties, private fields, and methods. And you learned that in well-constructed classes, properties should be used to control the access to private fields, where methods should be used to perform specific logic or return constructed values.